right, let's build a bench. The plans for this season's Builder's Challenge is this outdoor storage bench. And the whole point of the Builder's Challenge is to take this original plan, tweak it, and make it your own. So what I got from this was curves and storage, and then I just went off from there and created this design. So this has curves on either end, a storage compartment in the middle, and it also has some storage on the bottom, and I'll add some cool details with some brass, and hopefully this will work out like I have it planned in my head. So let's get started. I'm going to use this rough white oak, and the first step is to mark out where you're going to make all your cuts, and to make this easier, I decided to make a template that you could actually download on my website if you want to build this bench. I cut out the two pieces that were on the template and now I'll just tape them together at those cross lines. So this template is the side pieces of the bench and each side piece needs seven of these. To get the most out of my material, I'm going to flip the template over end to end and that will create less waste. So I split this big board up into three 23 inch sections and each of these sections is going to yield four side pieces. And I need 14 of these, that's only 12. So I had to take out this other board to get the two extra pieces. But here's a quick tip. While you're already milling, mill up some extra pieces and extra parts because you never know what's gonna go wrong. Now that this top face is flat, I can send it through the planer without the sled, just like this, and it will become square. Both faces are now flat, and I'll square up one edge now using a tapering jig at the table saw. Now I can use this straight edge against the fence to mill this into the strips that I need. Now each one of these pieces is going to make two side pieces. One going in this direction with the curve on this side and one going in the opposite direction with the curve on the other side. Before cutting this out with a jigsaw, I'm going to first make a hard template from this paper template. All right, so I have this scrap of quarter inch MDF and I know that from this edge to this edge on the template is supposed to be three and a half inches, so I will set the table saw to that measurement. Now I know this part of the template is supposed to be an inch and three quarters, so I'll set the fence to that measurement and I'll stop the cut before I get to the end. And now I could just trace the curve of the paper template and cut that out. So that's all there is to it to making templates. Obviously, there are a ton of other ways that you can make them. CNC would be super easy if you have access to one. You could just use a jigsaw and a sander, uh, but you could just forget the template altogether and just shape all the pieces individually, but that would be a lot harder. I find that building with templates is definitely way easier. So now all I need to do is trace this onto my pieces. And now I'll flip the template over in the other direction and trace it on the other side. And I'll rough cut this with a jigsaw. Now I'll temporarily put the hard template on with some double-sided tape. 
and use a flush trim bit at the router table to clean it all up. So it was a really good idea that I milled up some extra pieces because I made a mistake. So the bit caught on the end grain over here and it went flying, <laughs> didn't catch it on camera. Thank goodness I'm okay, everything's fine, except for this piece is not fine, but I have some extras. Just routers are really dangerous and scary. You just really need to be careful and be aware of grain direction when you're routing. So I thought of a few different ways that I'll be able to glue up all these side pieces and keep them all even with each other. I think I'm just going to try a simple method on just keeping it on a flat surface. And I know that all these ends are the same length, so I'll use a straight edge and butt it up against the ends and just make sure that that's all aligned before clamping it down. And hopefully this will work. I think it worked. <laughs> Off camera, I milled up this big piece of oak to the same thickness as the leg pieces, and I'm going to rip this into two strips for the stretchers. You just saw me joint one edge of these thinner boards using the track saw, and now I'm going to cut them up into strips that are the same thickness as the leg pieces. This way, it's going to look like the whole table or <laughs> bench is made up of the same thickness material. And my table saw fence is already set to the correct thickness from the stretchers that I just cut. And now I'll rearrange the pieces and twist them around so that it looks like they're made up from different panels. So sometimes when I do glue ups, I use dowels or biscuits to help with alignment. I did not use that here because I'm going to send this through the planer after the glue dries. I made sure when I milled these up that I did it to a little bit thicker than I actually needed. And then after the glue dries, I'll send it through the planer and I'll mill it to the exact thickness that I need. And now I will just sand the sides. And if you don't like using a router like I used before with the template, this is the point where you would take a belt sander and just shape the sides so that they're all even. Now I'll just square up the ends of the stretchers. And now I'll join these stretchers to the sides using dowels. I made this little jig that's going to help me with the dowels. So this piece of scrap over here is the same width of the stretchers and also all of these individual pieces over here. And I drilled these two holes in here that are equally spaced from the edge. And from this point down, this is also the halfway point of the thickness of this material. So all I need to do is line it up onto the edge over here, make sure that it's flush, and then just tap the nails and it'll leave some marks for where I need to drill holes for the dowels. And I'll use the same jig for the stretcher pieces on the end grain. Now I'll use that point that the jig made to drill out some 3 8 inch holes using a brad point bit. 
the point is going to go into that mark that I made and all the marks are going to be same because I used that jig. I'll also use this um, drilling guide block to try to keep my drill straight. The end grain is a bit more difficult to drill into, but can be done. And that's what you do when you don't have a domino. The brass tubing is going to go in the bottom of the sides and it's going to act as shoe storage. So in order to get all these holes lined up correctly on both sides, once again, I made myself a little template from some scrap. So these are all equally spaced apart and they're four inches up from this bottom. So I will just line this up, make sure it's flush on the sides and the bottom, clamp it down, drill out the holes, and then I'm going to take the template, make sure to flip it when I go to the other side and that way the holes will be aligned with each other. Well, I just made my first major mistake when cutting the brass rods. I measured how deep the holes were and I meant to add that to the overall length, but instead somehow I subtracted that. So now the brass rods are just a little bit too short. And what I think the simplest and easiest solution is going to be to fix it is to cut the stretchers just a little bit shorter. The bench is going to be a little less wide than I planned, but it happens. To help with clamping, I'm going to make these clamping calls and first I'm just going to cut away at one of the corners and I'm going to do that with my adjustable fence on my crosscut sled with a stop lock. Time to glue everything up. I'm about to go into full on panic mode so there will not be any close up shots of this glue up so just bear with me. So I'm gonna use screw clamps here to just Keep this up straight. I'll put glue on the dowels and the side pieces here. Now we'll just put the brass rods in on one side. And I made these spacers that are the perfect height for the brass rods to keep them in position. To help with the clamping pressure, I took the cutoffs from the curves and I'm going to clamp them to the ends and that will help close everything in tight. I'm keeping an eye on the bottom to see if the brass is touching the sides. And once it starts to get near the holes, I get that lined up. Since I don't have any clamps that are long enough for the bottom, I'll just have to, um, Use two clamps spread across. This will bring the bottom together. Now I'll take those clamping squares that I made before and I'll clamp them to all the corners, making sure that everything is square. Nice. Looking good, looking good, looking good. Well, that wasn't stressful at all. So I actually forgot to mention um, what I used to glue the, um, the brass in place. Uh, but DIY Huntress is actually making a similar kind of bench using steel tubing for a shelf like this. And she goes into a lot of detail on how to do that. So definitely check that out. I want there to be an eighth inch reveal all around the storage lid. So now I'm going to um, trim off an eighth of an inch on either side of the lid. Now I could cut the lid to its final length. Moving on to the storage box. Took some cutoffs from the lid to use as spacers and I'll move the whole base so that it's flush with those spacers. And I will base the rest of the measurements off of this brass strip that I'm going to use. So I'll just lay that in there, mark the bottom. And that's how wide I'm going to cut the two main sides of the storage compartment. 
I'll use the spacers again. Make sure everything is nice and lined up here. And I'll trace the inside of the legs. I almost forgot to make all the grooves in the bottoms of all the storage box pieces. This is going to hold the storage box bottom. I had cut these two pieces that are going to be the connection between the storage compartment and the bench. And I was trying to figure out a way how to connect these to uh, the storage compartment. And I figured since there's a quarter inch groove that's running along the entire bottom of the side pieces for the bottom of the compartment, I can just make that same size groove in the end over here and slide them in using a spline. So in order to cut a groove on the end of this piece of plywood, I'm going to use this jig. That was actually meant for something else, but if I line it up on the end over here, it can cut a slot using a slot cutting bit at the router table. And now I'm gonna add some pocket holes to help join it as well. I know. Pocket holes get a really bad reputation, and I think that's because a lot of people use them as the answer to everything when it's not. So I think that there's absolutely nothing wrong with pocket holes when the circumstances are correct. This is plywood, and also the way that the grain direction is going on the bench. I do not see a problem here, and I think this is going to be a really easy and strong way to join the storage compartment to the actual bench. Before assembling the actual storage compartment, I'm just going to countersink some holes and that's how I'm going to attach it to the bench. It's going to be easier to drill them now rather than later. Finally time to assemble the storage box and I'm probably going to go into a panic mode again, so just stick with me. So I'm gonna go corner by corner and just make sure that everything is aligned. Oh, I almost forgot glue. Put on a little bit of glue. Slide in the bottom. Okay, we are looking good. Everything looks nice and square. It's all lined up. So I'm gonna go ahead, pre-drill some holes and then lock it down with screws. Probably should have made some marks for where to drill. All right. Move it on to the other side. Now do the other side. What I'm doing is I'm flushing up this um, edge here before it curves up with the sides. The last little bit is the piece that I drilled the pocket holes in with the splines. And I want two going in this way and three going in that way. All right. Before installing it, I'm going to cover the front with brass. The brass that's overhanging can be flushed up with a flush trim bit in a trim router. Yes, you can use these bits on brass.
have this template from another project where I used it to make some draw poles and I'll try it on here. So I marked out the center, I line it up, mark it out, cut away at this, and then I'll use a flush trim bit with the router to finish the cut. Before finish sanding, I want to install the lid hardware. So I made a story stick that's the same width as this part of the bench, and I'll measure the same distance from the ends, making sure to avoid the screws that are in the side because I definitely don't want to run into those. Now I could take the story stick, line it up with the lid, make sure the ends are flush, and carry over those lines. I'll line that up with the zero mark on this hinge jig and drill away. This lid stay has this extra top piece, goes up on here. I put some double-sided tape on the back of here just to hold it in place temporarily. A 90 degree attachment really comes in handy here. Oh, and a VIX bit. Time for finish and I'm going to use Rubio Monocoat in a cotton white. So the white color in here is going to keep the oak natural looking and it's not going to look too orange. I am thrilled with the way that this turned out. If I were to build this again, I think I would do it the exact same way. I think the only thing that I would do is not to take the plastic off of the metal, off of the brass until after I'm done sanding. Um, but I would do everything exactly the same. I just love how this looks. It just looks so cool. The soft close is amazing on here. They were a little tricky to install, but I did some test runs before I actually installed it into here so that I wrapped my head around it and I, it's just great. So the bottom shelf I'm gonna use for storing some shoes. In the winter months, we'll use this storage compartment to hold cold weather items like hats and gloves and things like that. And in the summer months, we can use it to hold goggles and sunscreen. Since the weather is getting a lot warmer and we're starting to hang out outside a lot more, it's time to prepare some things for summer. The nozzle on our garden hose was stuck and I could not get it off. One spray with WD-40 and it loosened right up. My son is getting taller and I could not lift the height adjustment mechanism on his scooter. So I sprayed it once again with WD-40 and it quickly loosened up the parts so I could lift it up and he's ready to scoot. And finally, I used WD-40 Specialist Cleaner and Degreaser to clean up all of the grime that has built up on our grill over the winter, and now we're ready for summer. Huge thank you to WD-40 for sponsoring this video. Make sure to check out all the links down below. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you on the next one. <laughs> My alarm's going off because I have to take the pizza out of the oven. Not good timing. Oh my God, for real. Why does my phone always ring during glue ups?